For whatever reason, there seems to be an unspoken rule in nature, where the weirdest animals must come from the ocean. Now don't get me wrong, there are some very weird animals on land too. From parasitic disco worms to the naked mole rat, i.e. the animal equivalent of Deadpool. But hey, as weird as those guys are, at least they don't launch their penises like a rocket. Yes, you heard that right. Lurking in the depths of the ocean is an animal that has evolved the ability to literally detach their penis from their body and throw it at their potential mate. This is the Argonaut, also known as the Paper Nautilus. Now, you most likely have never heard of this animal, but they're actually somewhat common, being found worldwide in tropical and subtropical waters. And as you could probably tell from looking at them, these guys are cephalopods, specifically octopuses. But they're about the weirdest octopuses you'll ever meet. And I'm not just saying that because they managed to weaponize their genitalia. No, Argonauts have a number of traits and features that make them quite the unique octopus. For one, they are a completely pelagic species. Now, what does this mean? Well, pelagic comes from the Greek word pelagos, which literally means open sea. And so a pelagic species is one that spends the majority of its life in the open ocean, as opposed to living in coral, for example. The Argonaut is specifically epipelagic, meaning it hangs around the 0 to 200 meters or 600 feet range, which is also called the sunlight zone. And it is actually this pelagic lifestyle that inspired its name. As if you've ever heard about the mythological Argonauts, you'll know they were a band of Greek heroes renowned for their sailing abilities. And in the case of the Argonauts, they basically float through the water their whole life. And Aristotle actually described them in his book The History of Animals as creatures that use their arms as sails and steering oars to steer their unusual shell, which thus inspired their name Argonauts due to their quote-unquote sailing ability. Now two things. One, no, they do not actually use their arms as sails, instead swimming by expelling water as a sort of biological jet. But two, yes, they do actually have a shell, despite being an octopus. But I'll get to that later. The reason why this pelagicness is weird is that while this lifestyle of theirs is not actually unique to the Argonauts, it is quite uncommon compared to most other octopuses, with the three most common octopus habitat types being coral dwelling, benthic, meaning living on or near the ocean floor, and littoral, i.e. by the shore, such as intertidal zones. The reason why being pelagic is relatively uncommon for octopuses is that the pelagic zone essentially offers zero protection, as of course, being in the open water means there are no hiding spots. But to make up for this vulnerability, Argonauts have developed some pretty interesting abilities. For one, like all octopuses, the Argonauts are capable of changing their color to camouflage themselves, and they often do so in order to better blend in with their surroundings to avoid predators. And again, like almost all cephalopods, minus nautiloids and deep sea octopuses, Argonauts are able to produce ink. This ink is specifically ejected when the animal is being attacked, as cephalopod ink has the characteristic of not only being a great underwater smokescreen, but also highly annoying to the chemosensory system of certain animals. Kind of like how microwaved fish is to office workers. And this is important as many predators of octopuses, in particular, have uniquely developed olfactory systems to find them. And so this ink can serve to essentially numb or even completely deactivate the predator's ability to detect them through chemoreceptors for a short time. Now that being said, these two incredibly useful adaptations are not specific to the Argonauts. But what is, is a very peculiar shell that the Argonauts wear. And I say wear because it's not attached. And at one point, researchers thought that Argonauts were like hermit crabs, in the sense that they took shells abandoned by other animals. The marine biologist Jean Villepreux Power tested this theory by raising Argonauts from a young age. And what you found was that they actually do grow their own shell. But what's interesting is that it's only the females that have this shell. And the reason for this is that this so-called shell is actually a modified egg case, which is created by two unique tentacles that only the females have. Specifically, these dorsal tentacles secrete a mineral which is used to form the shell. And this process is done prior to egg laying. And once it is finished, the female octopus will then do two things. First, she'll have a housewarming party, which in Argonaut terms means laying the eggs in the newly formed shell. And then secondly, she herself will move into her new home. Now this may not sound unusual, but in reality, it's all types of weird, because the only current cephalopod with a shell is the Nautilus. However, the Nautilus's shell is completely different, as it is a true shell and actually houses the internal organs, and as such can obviously not be separated from the Nautilus. It is also made from a completely different mineral, that being aragonite, while the Argonaut specifically secretes calcite. 
This is a very important distinction because it tells us that its shell forming ability is not a modified form of an ancestral condition, but rather a completely separate trait that evolved specifically in the Argonauts lineage. Kind of like how my ability to turn any social interaction into an awkward biology lesson isn't inherited. That's all me, baby. However, because the Argonaut and Nautilus superficially share a similar resemblance, the Argonaut was nicknamed the Paper Nautilus, despite being an octopus. And despite the shells being very different in nature, there are some shared similarities between how the shells are used. And one of those is its contribution to its sailing ability. Like I mentioned, Argonauts are named after the mythical group of sailors, the Argonauts. An Argonaut itself literally means sailor of the Argo, with a knot portion meaning sailor, and Argo meaning, well, Argo. Now, if you're observant, you'll have noticed that this same knot makes up the first part of the name Nautilus, which is no coincidence, as Nautilus literally means little sailor. And the reason for this is that similar to the Argonauts, they are a pelagic cephalopod species, spending their whole life floating through the water. And this ability to float so expertly is a function of its shell, as they essentially have the ability to regulate their buoyancy through controlling how much gas and liquid is in their siphuncal, which is basically this tube that runs throughout the shell. Which honestly does not sound that unique, considering we humans also expertly control how much gas and liquid is within us with a very similar spelled word. Now, the Argonauts do something similar, albeit much simpler, instead opting for cultivating a little air bubble in the shell, which helps them float. But don't let this simplicity fool you, as they are experts in manipulation, just like my ex, being able to fine tune it to match their desired buoyancy. And their skill with maneuvering their shell also extends to wielding it as a defensive tool. Specifically, Argonauts have been observed pulling back the web covering of the shell in response to predators, which causes it to reflect light and emit a silvery flash, which I like to think as basically the octopus equivalent of your younger sibling using something shiny to reflect light into your eye at dinner. And similar to its annoyingness, this flashing has the ability to deter predators from attacking, and pretty much makes them the silver surfer for as far as I'm concerned. However, these tools specifically only help the females, as the male Argonauts, as mentioned, do not have a shell, and seem to instead rely on hitching a ride for possible defense and buoyancy control. And what I mean by this is that the male Argonauts are often observed residing literally inside salps, a type of tunicate that kind of looks like a jellyfish. Now, salps are small, being between 1 and 10 centimeters. So you might be wondering, how does a whole freaking octopus fit inside there? And you'd be right to question this, but the answer is pretty straightforward. Argonauts are really small. Well, to be more specific, it's the males that are really small, being about 1 to 2 centimeters. In comparison, the females are about 10 centimeters, with the shell then adding an additional 30 centimeters. So significantly bigger to say the least. And in fact, the males are so much smaller that we didn't even know they existed until 160 years ago. But now, don't count our short kings out just yet, as they have evolved perhaps one of the craziest ways to get some. And that's by literally detaching their penis and throwing it at their crush. Similar to how the female Argonauts have a special tentacle to create the eggshell, the males too have their own unique special tool, and that is their hectocotylus. Now to be more exact, the hectocotylus is technically a modified arm and not a penis in the sense of how we might think of it, but it's only found in male cephalopods and its primary purpose is to transfer sperm to its female counterpart. So pretty much a penis in all sense of the word. And now, the Argonaut could have been like all other self-respecting male octopuses and simply reproduced with its tool still attached. But no, nature decided to make it a complete degenerate and have its hectocotylus completely detached from its body. Now to be clear, we're not exactly sure how the hectocotylus actually gets to the female. It could be that the male Argonaut gives it in close proximity, or it could be a weaponized tool of mass destruction and act like a heat-seeking missile trying to find a mate. Originally, it was believed to be the latter, but now the most likely case is the former, through where contact is made by the male, and then he detaches his penis. But does that really make it any better? Maybe. I don't know. But what we do know is that the hectocotylus is autonomous. So yes, it can literally think with its reproductive organ. Or rather, it thinks for itself. As a 2021 study looking at the reproductive behavior of Argonauts observed that an already detached hectocotylus does not only move around independently for at least a few hours, but would also literally defend itself from threats by moving deeper within the shell case of the female. And get this, once it was removed from the shell and put on a plate to study, the hectocotylus actually just started walking around the plate, most likely searching for its mate, 
as once the female's shell was put back on the plate, this penis immediately made a beeline for it before moving back in. So now, you might be thinking, what happens to the male who's now lost his member? Well, we're not 100% sure, since it's so rare to observe male Argonauts in general, let alone seeing them do the dirty. But what we are pretty sure of is that they likely can only mate once in their lifetime, likely dying shortly after the fact. Potentially due to the detachment itself, perhaps getting eaten by his chosen partner, or maybe even due to pure regret of having lost its tool. Just kidding. Probably. But whatever the case, this mating strategy actually seems to be quite successful, given their widespread distribution around the world. And hey, if someone is willing to go to such lengths for the survival of their species, that guy is a hero in my book. <laughs>